or observe curvature is because of the size and the enormity of our planet. And the uh, analogy is that imagine that you're an ant on this huge ball and you're so small and the, uh, you know, your ability to see only certain distances and, and determine the ground in front of you is, is all that you have. You're not going to see the curvature. I think that that is a nice word salad, uh, metaphysical, theoretical explanation that ultimately works against um, our determination to try and determine if there is any curvature. So, for instance, or, or by way of analogy, remember in the Truman Show when Truman stood up in, in his class in middle school or whatever, and he said that he wanted to be an explorer like Magellan. And his teacher said, oh, I'm sorry, Truman. Everything's already been discovered. Now, what did that do, right? That told Truman, there's nothing for you to do. Don't even try. And so when we're given that explanation that you're an ant on a big, huge ball and you can't figure it out, so don't even try. That is a huge um, will to power over the mindset of a student and that student will pretty much capitulate to that paradigm. So um, my, my perspective again is, yeah, there's no observable curvature. And the reason why we say that now in this discussion is because if we're going to try and determine the curvature, there is a measurable determination of the curvature of the earth. The earth is a certain circumference that can be measured. There is an equation. And okay. what we have in terms of what we have in terms of our observations, those observations go against that equation. It doesn't match up. Okay. Dr. Trin. So um I love the Truman Show. It's a funny movie. It's um, fun that you brought it up because uh, it is a little comic relief there. It wasn't relevant at all, except for you did make a, a point that um, I would like to disagree with first before I get into any geometry. You see, when you brought up the teacher um, saying um, that to the to Truman, to, to Jim Carrey's character, that, oh, it's already been discovered, you know, like, uh, you know, there, there's no need to go out. See, like, I'm I'm actually a teacher. Like, I, you may or may not have known that. I, I'm an actual physics teacher, and I know a lot of teachers, and I know a lot of physics teachers, and I know a lot of college physics professors. I know a lot of these guys. Not a single one of them has ever said that or has any intent. I'm not saying you said that. I'm just saying the narrative you were implying is patently false. In fact, it's the contrary. I myself uh, uh, try every day to inspire these kids to to seek wonder and awe and the, the beauty of the natural world as it exists in reality, um, the reality that we know it to be, and to go out and explore, um, learn, um, make discoveries. The, the world is your oyster. And I, I give examples of, uh, of uh, how I've done that in my own life uh, in my younger years and continue to uh, attempt to do so uh, in my current career. And so, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there real quick and then come a full circle, if you will, back to your statement. Can I about... respond to that real quick? Sure, go for it. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd be curious as to if, if you could reiterate my point in bringing up the Truman Show analogy. What was my point? Uh, you, you were talking about Magellan exploring and how um, essentially um, we are told or indoctrinated by the powers that be, this nameless, faceless they, that um, brainwashes us into believing that we're on a spinning ball when in fact we're not. And so they coerce us to avoid any sort of um, exploration and all that jazz. Okay. Um, I, I tried not to use loaded terms in my answer earlier. And so I didn't use any powers that be, I didn't use indoctrination. 
I didn't use they, I didn't use brainwashing. My point was because I was told and I have had people respond to me, which means they were told, you're like an ant on a huge ball that you cannot determine mm. the uh, size of. What my point was, was that that information plays a role in affecting a person's determination to particularly try and determine. Why would I try to determine the size of the earth if it's impossible? It's impossible to determine the size impossible. of the earth. It's impossible. I'm saying, what? yeah, that's, that's the point. That's the point of the statement. You're like an ant. You can't, you, you think because we're on a huge globe that's 25,000 miles in circumference. You're like an ant. I'm trying to say to you that kind of rhetoric is intended to communicate something. That is, you can't do it. Now, uh, I didn't also say any. I I also didn't say anything about you or your colleagues. I wasn't trying to smear your ability or your approach when you teach. That's not. I was not disparaging you yeah, in, yeah, any, in any way. Okay, mm. but you brought that sure. up as a point against me. So it, well, it was, I also it said follow. I also I also said I know you didn't say that when I was saying it. I was making my own point because right, but, you don't right, have to explicitly my point say that, something. You're implying a narrative. Okay? You're implying a narrative. Yeah. Right, but okay. um, listen to the fact that just real quick, listen to the fact that you said I know you didn't say this, but okay, first of all, that completely negates what you're about to say. I didn't say it. So don't bring it up. Dr. Kroon? You yeah. said we'll it. Give you you the... said it in different, different terminology. This whole ant on a 25,000 mile circumference thing and you can't, you can't determine its size. Let's get back to, uh, let, let's get away from the, uh, the, let's get, let's do this. Let's get away from the, the movie analogy right now and focus on the actual science at hand and, and the actual, um, the curvature of the earth and how it can be demonstrated um, scientifically. Dr. Kroon, do you want to speak to how there is um, a way that you can actually do that? Um, there, there's so many. Uh, the Ari I'm sure you, you're familiar with the Eratosthenes experiment where you put it, you put a stick in the ground at noon, um, like on the equinox or whenever like the sun is directly overhead for that latitude and then you measure the angle that a stick at the same uh, longitude at the same day, like, you know, 700 miles north or 100, whatever. You know that linear distance. You know the angle. It's geometry. You can, uh, he, did, he did this calculation a long, long time ago and got it pretty accurately. I think he's within like 5 or 10%. Um, that's just one of, of hundreds of observations you can make. You can measure the circumference of the Earth uh, pretty easily. Um, so, would you like to respond to that? Can I address that before we move on? Yeah, sure. please. Okay. So let's let's say, for instance, because we're doing just straight straight trigonometry. Um, let's say that I put a stick in the ground, and um, it's at noon on on Monday, and I measure the angle and whatnot, and I measure my elevation, I measure my longitude and latitude or whatever, my, my position. And then let's say that I, I wait till the next year because, again, if I, if I did it 10 minutes later, the sun would have moved, so it's not going to be the same angle. So guess what I have to do? I have to wait a whole year before that sun is in that same spot again. So the next year, I uh, plan to, at the same time, but in a different location, put a stick in the ground. Now I'm 500 miles away from where I was before. It's the same time of day. Now, I put the stick in the ground and I get a different angle. I am mm -hmm. not going to be able to determine that I'm on a curved surface because the angle is different. What I'm going to do, because it's straight trigonometry and straight trigonometry deals with lines and angles and no curves, 
is that I have now moved away from the source of light. And so that uh, angular change is the reason why there's a difference in the angle, not because there's a curved surface. Because when we do straight trig, you don't get curved surfaces. I disagree. Well, then you'd have to do a, an, a, a demonstration of how you get anything curved from straight trigonometry. So what do you mean, st what, straight trigonometry? Did you just make that up like everything else? Can you define that I'm for sorry, us? What else I? I don't know what that means. You're, you're make, he's straight making up new, new math, I guess. I, I, I don't, I don't know, know what, what that is. Is that like non, is that heterosexual trigonometry of some kind? <laughs> I, I yes, don't, I've never yes, heard it before, so... Yeah, it's it's only, trig it's is only trig. trigonometry done trig by. Is trig. If you could, if, matter, if, if straight or mm. not straight, trig is trig. Okay, mm -hmm. how about this trig basic, trig. basic trigonometry? Okay, we're we're measuring angles and lines. We're measuring angles and lines. I put a straight stick in the ground. If I measure the angle and I measure the lines, I'm not going to get a curved surface. Um, why? Because a triangle has straight lines and a 90 degree angle. Um, okay. So are you, I don't really understand. What's your position here? So we already said it's an observable demonstrable fact. You know what I mean when I say a demonstrable fact that sticks that cast no shadow on that, on, on some day, on some location on earth, at that exact instant in time, you could phone a friend, and you could, or you can go there in advance. You know this equinox is coming. You go 500 miles north, right? And you set up shop, and you're waiting. All right, it's 1130. You got your stick ready. Wait for it. Wait for it. Have your protractor ready. I'll even buy you the protractor, and you can keep it. And you measure the angle that the shadow of that stick makes, uh, you know, five degrees or whatnot. And you know at that instant in time, the exact same stick at the sticking out exactly perpendicular to the ground uh, back where we started has no shadow. So how does that not mean that the earth is curved? I mean, this is a classic, it's, it's an ancient experiment that was done and you can, it's been repeated over the ages. How, how are you saying that that's not a curved earth? All right. Let's imagine that it's sunrise and I've got a stick in the ground at the beach. I'm at sea level. The sun has just come up. Right? Okay. I measure the mm -hmm. angle. You're out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and it's noon for you, wherever it is. It's noon for you. So for you, your stick that's on the deck of your ship has no shadow. But right now, you're talking to me on the phone, and you're saying, okay, you've got your stick in the ground? I say, yeah. I said, the sun just came up. You're like, it's straight overhead for me, bro. And I said, yeah, the sun just came up for me. And you're like, great, measure that angle. Ah, uh, uh, good one. Uh, see, see, uh, that was a non sequitur. So you, you change it to oh. a longitude, change in longitude at a constant latitude. Uh, please uh, refrain from non sequiturs. We're talking about constant longitude <laughs> at, a, at a different latitude. That's... That's what we're talking about here. The Earth is spinning, although uh, I understand if if you didn't uh, accept that as part of reality, that's your position. But um, the Eratosthenes experiment uh, only works when you're looking at um, two different latitudes, north south, on the same longitudinal line. What you described was the exact opposite. It doesn't work there. We're talking about um, equinoxes. Uh, so do you want to uh, sort of bring it, reel it back in and get back to the Eratosthenes thing, or do you want to move on to well, the next the part, Yeah, okay, so the, yeah, my only, my only point is that your, your whole model of, of talking about lat longitude and latitude presupposes that you're on a spinning ball, so I, I would reject that to begin with because I don't accept that model. The, it's the, not the Earth a presupposition is flat. if it was demonstrated. Like, what do you mean? No, you... They were trying to figure, they're trying to measure the circumference of the earth. And they noticed for years, years, decades, that a well, they're looking down at the bottom of a well to get, you know, water to drink. 